you know, central banks are buying stocks in the open market and, um, uh, you know, trying to prevent these markets from crashing. So, yeah, for sure. It's, it's all these markets, whether you call it manipulated or not, maybe manip- manipulation is the wrong word, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of activity out there that is, uh, you know, you know, protecting people's books or pre- protecting people's investments. You know, so if you've been a long position or a short position in a particular, you know, stock or entity of some kind, it's in your best interest to try to, you know, force a profit out of that position. So you'll, you'll defend your, position you know tooth and nail if you've got enough money um you know then maybe you cross the line you could start calling a manipulation but whatever you want to call it you know definitely these these markets are managed do you think that as they throw these gold contracts at gold because just the other day they threw out like you know twenty thousand contracts and they brought gold down do you think they're trying to keep people away from gold? Do you think they're trying to keep people away from silver? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, um, you know, more so gold probably, but, you know, silver is looked at as, as the poor man's gold, which is, you know, quite, quite honestly, you know, complete fallacy. You know, silver is not gold. Silver is a strategic metal and it's not a, you know, it is precious, of course, but, um, you know, it's more strategic than gold is. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, governments want people to have confidence in their currencies and, 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 uh, you know, to accept the, their currencies for trade. And, and it's natural for them to, you know, not want people to, to be invested in the metal sector. And there's lots of documents out there. Um, you know, when, when Nixon came off the gold standard in the seventies, there was, uh, an, an interesting document that was circulating, you know, and, and uh, written at the time by by the uh, Fed governor at the time, and it said quite clearly in that letter that um, you know it, it's in the best interest of the government to 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 uh, not so much prevent but um, uh, dissuade people from buying precious metals. Now, last financial crisis we had back in two thousand eight, we saw gold shoot up to around 1900 and uh, there's a lot of financial pundits out there one uh, Steve St. Angelo who's saying that uh, global gold investment demand will overwhelm supply during the next market crash because back in 2008 we saw gold bar and coin demand double to 868 metric tons up from 434 in 2007 do you think the same thing is going to happen if we approach the next financial crisis or we're in the next financial crisis? Well, I think the next crisis is going to be worse than the last one. And I think the um, bull market, uh, it started, it, it started off, you know, a little bit slow and we're in a bit of a correction, you know, within a bull market, but we're definitely started a, do, a new bull market in, in um, gold and silver. But nevertheless, I think this one that we're seeing or, or, or in the, in the midst of, which could go five years or 10 years. And I don't have a crystal ball to, you know, say how long the next bull market's going to go. But, um, you know, the last market, you know, took gold from 250 to 1900. It's about an eight times move. And silver went from, you know, $5 to $50 a 10 times move. And using those same types of ratios, um, you know, that would take silver from its lows of, you know, 1350 basically or 1330 you know, all the way up to $130 silver. And I've said this several times in, in interviews and it's not the first time I've, you know, thrown numbers out like that. And then, you know, that would put, you know, gold at somewhere around $8,000. So, you know, these, you know, these moves are what I'm expecting. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, um, uh, you know, I'd be running out to, to, to buy gold and silver just based on my belief, but, um, you know, that's what I'm expecting to see um, uh, in, in, the, in the next uh, bull market in gold and silver. Now, uh, very interesting that you say that, you know, gold is going to move up um, and this is what you think is going to happen because Ray Dalio, he's on a gold buying spree right now. He added about 575% to his GLD holdings and he's, what is the, the eighth largest holder now? Does this 
tell you something that something is going on in 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 the economy in the market well you know as i said in previous interviews i, I would probably recommend he doesn't buy gld but um i think buying the gold miners would be a, a much more intelligent move um but you know because the the a good gold company or a silver company um, will move a lot more than, than the metal itself but um you know, I guess, you know, an investor like that looks at looks at GLD possibly as a safer investment than than a gold miner. But, um, you know, that's the argument that, uh, you know, for another day, I guess. But, you know, the the uh, definitely, you know, guys like that that are, you know, sophisticated investors taking a position like that obviously says something about what's happening in the marketplace. And I think he's dead, dead on uh, and, and is making definitely the right move. So if he's making this move in uh, GLD holdings, which is paper holdings, I mean, if we look at the miners, I mean, you're the president and CEO of uh, First Majestic and you're chairman of the First Mining Finance Company. If you can just give me a little, uh, not me, but everyone, a little background of First Mining, you know, what have you guys been up to? What have you been doing? You're on the front lines here. And what do you see coming? Yeah, well, look, I'm a bull on gold. I'm a bull on silver. So yeah, I put together uh, First Majestic Silver back in, in the early 2000s because of my view on on silver and i still i still have that similar view i think silver is going to do very well over the next uh few years and that's why i'm still the ceo of first majestic silver because i think there's a ton of growth left and and um i'm very excited about um uh, first majestic but in the case of first mining you know back in 2015 uh, 2014 2015 2016 when i was putting the company together I hadn't seen valuations like that in the gold space. And, you know, my technical team put together a list of targets and uh, I was just compelled to go out there and try to buy as many of these targets as possible. And, you know, these companies um, that we bought were, you know, were trading at, you know, several times uh, the value during the bull market than, than they were trading when, when we stepped in and started buying them up. And, uh, you know, it was amazing to me that we actually were as successful as we were and that we were able to accumulate, you know, 25 projects of which, you know, five are, are tier one projects all in Eastern Canada, you know, with, with gold, you know, proven in the ground or, or at least resources proven in the ground. And, um, um, uh, and, and we're going to develop these assets over the next few years and, and hopefully I even see some of them come into production. So what has your uh, track record been over the 16 months? The first acquisition we did was a hostile deal, which was basically within two weeks of the company going public. It was pretty amazing. And uh, it, 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 we actually did win that battle and then and, uh, we acquired the Hope Brook project. And then we did another acquisition within weeks after that. And, uh, you know, this is a, a brand new company that just went public and, and, and over a 15 month period, I think we bought eight companies and then, uh, um, you know, of, of the six, of six of those eight were our top 10 target list. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, I didn't even think we we're going to be that successful. You know, when we, when we came public in, in, in 2015, we, we figured we could do four deals in the next 12 months. And that was kind of our, our goal. We had ended up doing eight, eight deals in, in, in 13 months or 15 months, I think it was. Um, so, you know, we, we outperformed even our, our own internal expectations. And today, First Mining's got, I think anyways, the, the, the best gold development por portfolio of any junior, uh, uh, mining company. So we see the Fed out there and a lot of the Fed houses talking about inflation and, and they've been going on and on and on about, you know, trying to hit this 2% inflation. And most of us realize that there's a lot more inflation out there than what the Fed has been telling us. And we're seeing that core inflation has been rising after the six years of deleveraging. And we see that, you know, China, we see Russia, they've been purchasing a lot of gold. Do you think they realize that the inflation rate is much higher than what the Fed is reporting? And do you think they're protecting themselves with gold? I think they're protecting themselves against the revaluation of all fiat currencies, quite frankly. I, I, I'm not sure, um, you know, if they're, you know, bothered by interest rates or anything else. I just think they're, they're, they're you know, I'm, I'm a you know, believer in, in, in the Jim Rickards view, you know, whereby, you know, he's saying that the governments of the world need to revalue gold at a certain price in order for them to be uh, liquid. 
in order for them to, you know, deal with their, their debts and their deficits. And, and I think that's where we're going. So, you know, I think virtually all the currencies that we currently use, you know, around the planet will all disappear and will be replaced by, you know, some new financial system. So, you know, that's, you know, it probably won't happen overnight. Uh, it'll, it'll happen over time. Um, you know, as, as, as people get more wind of it and as other governments get, get, get on side with that, you know, change in the financial environment, you know, gold prices will start to move and, and, uh, um, you know, we could see, you know, multi thousand gold prices, uh, um, you know, as a result of this new financial change. Now, the the gold and silver ratio, they have been uh, what are they? It's like 77 to one right now, something like that. I mean, is this normal? Well, it, it depends on how far you go back. But uh, look, you know, silver, silver, you know, if you go back 100 years, um, the ratio was about, you know, 15 or 20 to one. Um, and, and silver was used in, um, uh, you know, cutlery and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, things like that and coinage were really the only two uses. And then, you know, come, you know, fast forward to, you know, the, when photography came into being, uh, silver started showing up there. And by, by the mid eighties, you know, 25% of the world's silver market was consumed by photography of which, you know, the majority of that was recycled. And, and, uh, silver didn't really find its way, uh, into other commercial uses until after that. And, 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 uh, and now it's used in, you know, technology, you know, throughout the entire world. And, you know, this, this call right now that we're having simply just couldn't take place without, without silver. So, um, you know, to go green and do all the different things that we need to do as a human race to improve the way we live, um, requires a ton of silver and, and, uh, you know, we're mining, even though I'm a huge bull on gold, and I, you know, as I said already, I think gold's going much, much higher. But silver, I still can, uh, uh, believe, will outperform gold, even even though gold will be going higher as well. And I think it's because of what we're mining. Uh, you know, and I've said a hundred times, and I, I probably will say it another hundred times, um, that we're mining nine to one. So, so for every one ounce of gold, we're mining nine ounces of silver. And then you said it yourself, we're trading at 77 to one. So if, if someone could explain to me how a ratio like that can last for, you know, uh, year after year after year, you know, please do because I'd love to listen to you. You know, um, I believe that it can't last. And I believe that, um, one day there's going to be a supply disruption where, you know, Apple or, or, or Tesla or Sony or, or Samsung or you, you name the company just simply will not be able to buy uh, manufacturers products any longer because it doesn't have access to, to silver. And uh, that's a belief I have. And that's why I'm the CEO of First Majestic Silver, whether it happens or not, time will tell. People criticize me for, for my predictions and I get it all the time, but uh, look, I'm a big boy and, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I can have my own beliefs and, you know, that's why I'm going to, can, you know, going to continue to build First Majestic into, you know, even a much larger company than it currently is today. What's very interesting is that the 77 to 1 ratio, this has happened seven times since 1988. And every time it did, silver outperformed and mining shares outperformed both metals. I mean, uh, do you think this is, you're, what you're saying is you think this is going to happen once again? Yeah, if you go and look at our corporate um, presentation on our website, you'll see there's a, a page there that shows, I think, a 25-year chart on on the ratio. And and you're right, you're dead on. Every time it gets around 80, 80 in that 80 plus or you know whatever, um, it always corrects. The last time it hit, I think, about 85 or something, it dropped all the way to 37. Or maybe it was 33 in, in, in April 2011. I forget exactly what the ratio was, but either 33 or 37. But that's an amazing run where, where silver dramatically outperformed gold. And I think that's exactly the same thing's going to happen again. I think over the next five years, again, we're going to see, you know, silver outperform gold. And I'm, I'm calling for triple digit silver. And, um, you know, as ridiculous as, as it may sound, that's that's where I think it's going. And you think the mining shares are going to outperform both metals? 
Well, they always do, you know, like, you know, look, look at First Majestic in, in the first six months of 2016, for example. You know, we, you know, the stock was down, I remember, 20% in January of 2016. Silver hit a low of 1330 that month. It was a devastating month. The miners are just being absolutely killed that month. And then all of a sudden, you know, boom, things turned around. And, and starting in February, silver started to take off and silver went to, to uh, just under $21. So, so it had a, a basically a $7 move, uh, from January or February to August. Uh, first Majestic shares, um, well, we're, we're if it, around four dollars Canadian, you know, around three dollars US approximately, and and the stock went to twenty US and then twenty five Canadian. So you had a seven dollar move in silver, and you had a twenty one dollar move uh, in Canadian terms uh, in the in the share price. So you basically had a three times move in in, in the stock versus the metal, and and that's kind of the beta you get. It's not an exact science, of course, but uh, you know, if you go back 15 years and look at how First Majestic trades, you know, it trades, um, um, you know, multiple of the silver price when it moves. But it also that works against you as well. You know, when silver is going down, the stock dramatically underperforms. But when silver is going up, the stock dramatically overperforms. In an economic crisis, I mean, a lot of people talk about, you know, owning gold, owning silver, um, owning mining stocks. Is, is this still important to have in your portfolio to protect your wealth? Well, you know, I, I you know, for me, yes. Um, um, you know, for other people, they may disagree, but, um, uh, you know, it's really, uh, you know, the tolerance of the, the, the individual investor. And what, what the objectives or goals of that, that individual investor are. And then, uh, you know, for me, I'm an expert in mining. You know, I'm very comfortable investing in the mining sector. I know it quite well. I know it's risky as well. And I, I know that, you know, you have to be prepared to be wrong. Um, you know, you buy a stock at, you know, a dollar and next thing you know, it's at 50 cents and it, it scares people out and they sell it. And like next thing you know, this stocks, you know, moved again higher and, and, uh, um, you know, that's an unfortunate thing about the mining sector is it is extremely volatile and, 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 and people that are investing in the sector have to be, you know, uh, very aware of their investments, do the proper due diligence, keep their eye on their investments, but be, be prepared for the volatility. And, uh, um, you know, often when, when I go in and, and buy a new position, you know, in, in a, in a company that I'm interested in, I may be down 10, 20 percent, even sometimes 50 percent you know, to begin with, but as long as the fundamentals are still there and I still like the company, you know, investors have to ask themselves, you know, three, you know, three questions when they own a stock, not just a mining stock, but any stock, would you buy it? Would you sell it or would you hold it? And, and, uh, you know, if you, if you can answer that question, you know, or ask that question of yourself every single time you look at your portfolio, you know, you can then really make you know, I think anyways, proper decisions on, on what you should be doing to advance your portfolio or, or to try and try to squeeze a profit out of your portfolio. Do you have any new projects or anything that you can tell our listeners of what's coming up or what you're up to right now? Well, you know, always up to all kinds of interesting things, you know, being, being, being the CEO of, you know, a, a fairly large mining company, um, you know, we're always doing some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I think, you know, the things that excite me the most are, are some of the technologies that we're adopting in our operations in Mexico. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I've said, you know, in my previous interviews, uh, that the, the mining sector is going through change right now. Um, you know, it was forced upon the mining sector by low prices and low margins and, 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 and a need to, you know, turn companies or mining companies profitable again. And, and mining companies led by, you know, companies like Barrick and First Quantum and Tech and, and Gold Corp and, 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 and to, and ourselves, of course, you know, we're, we're adopting new technologies and changing the way we do business. And not only will mines become greener, um, uh, but they're also going to become more, uh, very much more efficient and, and, uh, lower cost operations. And that's really critical for the future of the mining sector. So those are the things that First Majestic are focused on and the things that, you know, really get me excited. 
Um, you know, in the case of first mining finance, um, you know, just continually drill and then develop these assets. You know, the, there's not too many companies out there that have a, a portfolio like first mining finance you know, with 25 projects with, you know, five projects with over 12 million ounces of gold and defined in them. You know, Spring Pole project itself has over 5 million ounces of gold or around 5 million ounces of gold, pardon me. Um, and, you know, it's one of the largest undeveloped gold projects there is in, in North America. And we feel we feel that that will be aligned ultimately. It still has to go through, you know, permitting and and, and uh, feasibility study and all those kinds of things, which is normal. But uh, you know, that, uh, based on the current numbers, you know that 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 should be a three hundred thousand ounce producer of gold, which is pretty darn large. And, and the PA that just came out values that kind of, that asset itself around a billion dollars, which is. Uh, you know what uh, the current market cap for first mining is 250 million so you've got one asset that's uh that's potentially worth you know four times the the current market cap of the company so you know that's forgetting all the other assets you know when you've got gold loan with uh two and a half million ounces of gold you got uh hope broke with a million you've got pickle crow with a million you've got to cameron with a million so you've got some pretty good assets there that are just simply not being properly valued in the market